how to write with infusible ink, pens, and markers. But before we get into this tutorial, let's talk a little bit about the infusible ink, pens, and markers and clear up a few things. First of all, infusible ink, pens, and markers both do the exact same thing. The difference is just how thick they write. So the infusible ink pens write in a much thinner 0.4 millimeter line, whereas the markers write with a 1.0 millimeter line. So the difference is just the thickness. And you can apply these to laser copy paper, and then the laser copy paper can be applied to any Cricut Infusible Ink compatible blank or a sublimation polyester coated blank. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to apply these to polyester coated mugs using my Cricut mug press. But feel free to get creative and try lots of other blanks with these pens and markers. I'm also going to address some other questions that I had about using these markers in the tutorial. So if you have questions, hang on tight. Let's jump into this tutorial. So to get started with using your infusible ink pens on a mug, first we need to go into projects and find the mug press design setup. So we'll, we'll search mug press setup. And you'll see that there are lots of template options here at the top. So we're gonna select the drawn mug design setup. And then under the finished size, I'm gonna be using a 12 ounce small mug, so I'll choose that. And then select customize. And that will give you a bit of a template to get started, which is really, really helpful when you're designing these mugs to make sure that you're putting everything in the right place. As you can see, these guides are showing you where like a third of a way around the mug would be halfway and then the rest of the way around, which makes it really easy to line up. So next we need to find a design that works with the infusible ink pens or markers. So we're going to go into images and search for hello beautiful in the search bar. And of course you can browse and use tons of other designs if you want to, but I found this hello beautiful design that I think is really pretty and it's free. So whether or not you have Cricut access, you should be able to use this at least at the time that I am filming this video. That of course could always change. So we'll select this design and then choose insert images. And as you can see, it's really, really big. So I'll go ahead and make it quite a bit smaller. Actually, at the top, I'm gonna make it about three inches. I like to make a lot of my designs double-sided. So um, actually, yeah, three inches sounds about right. And I ended up um, moving my designs a little bit closer to the middle of the mug. I end up finding that if I center them on this line, it ends up being kind of close to the handle. So I like to go a little closer toward the center line something like that. And then I will duplicate the design and move it over here. And just try to put it approximately in the same place. Something about like that. Another thing I like to do is click it and select the other one as well by holding down the shift key and then choosing a line and center vertically so that they're exactly the same um, height around the mug. Whoops, <laughs> got a little lost there. Where did we go? There we are. Okay, so let's see, that's looking a little bit far out. So maybe I'll drag it in just a little bit. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Then I'll select both again, use a line and center vertically. And now we are good to go. So you'll see that the um, little mug line up lines say hide this layer before cutting so we'll click the eyeball to hide them and then we need to attach everything so that the pens draw in exactly the right place so we'll click and drag a box around both designs and the template and choose attach and when we choose attach that still allows the um the pen design to draw as well as the um, template to cut out so it's all good to go then we'll click the green make it button and I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker 3 and I'm gonna be doing this project on the mat using laser copy paper. And I'll talk about that here in just a second. 
Another important thing to note is that we are going to be putting the ink side up to our mug. So anytime you work with infusible ink pens or infusible ink in general, you'll need to toggle the mirror switch on so that your text goes onto the mug correctly. Then we'll click continue. And once the machine connects, then we'll need to choose our cut setting. So like I said, I am using laser copy paper, which is what Cricut recommends when you work with their pens on these mugs. I have tried it with like some more general paper, like copy paper, as well as sublimation paper. And laser copy paper is a little bit brighter, so I think it definitely does work best. But my laser copy paper is a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna choose Browse All Materials and search for the copy paper setting. And you'll see they've got a couple different weights here for the paper. And my paper is 24 pound, um, so that's what I'm going to use. Even though they do have laser copy paper here as a setting as well, I know for sure that my uh, paper is exactly 24 pounds. So that's what I'm going to use as my cut setting. So it also will tell you when to load in your pens um, into the design. So let's hop over to my Cricut machine and I'll show you what it looks like to put this on the mat, get it drawn, and make your custom mug. So to get started drawing my design, the first thing I'm going to do is place my laser copy paper in the upper left hand corner of my mat, just like this. And once your paper is laid out, next it's time to add the pens to your machine. So open up the Cricut machine that you're using and follow the instructions on your computer screen as to which color comes first. So I'm gonna be using the Midnight Black Point four pen and I'm gonna be putting it in clamp A. So what I like to do is put the pen cap on the back of my pen and then you need to see the triangle facing forward like this. Open up clamp A, then simply insert the pen like this and after it clicks, you can close clamp A and you're ready to roll. So I'll just insert the mat into my machine. My Cricut Maker 3 is gonna measure the mat, so unless you have a third generation machine, yours won't do that. And then when the play button, plat and then when the play button flashes, you can press it to start cutting. And next, my computer is telling me to add in my green pen. So I'm just going to open up clamp A, remove the black pen. and insert my green pen. And lastly, we'll insert our pink pen. Remember not to unload your mat each time you switch out your pen. Just simply switch it out and then press the flashing play button. And once everything is finished cutting and writing, you can unload your mat, put your pen away, and begin heating up your Cricut Mug Press while we prepare our mug.
But while this is heating up, I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between the pens and markers because I told you guys they do essentially the same thing, but I wanted to show you side by side how different these look. So I wrote that top line myself using the infusible ink pen and I wrote the bottom line in a dark purple marker. So you can see how much thicker the difference is between the two of them, but the ink is exactly the same. So typically what people are doing with the pens is that they are allowing the pens to actually draw out the design on the laser copy paper. And then if you decide that you have a design you want to color in, you can do that using the markers. So I had my Cricut draw this little penguin and then I colored it in using the markers and applied it to my mug. So it's super fun to do no matter what. I'm not going to be using any markers in um, my design because I'm not a very neat colorer and I don't want to mess up this cute little font. So I'm going to leave this just the way that it is, but I wanted to address that part because I'm, I was very confused about that as a beginner. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of how that works. You can also put the markers in your machine. If you prefer to draw your design with a marker, that's fine too. This is just typically how people are using them with the pens for drawing and then the markers for coloring. Another thing I was confused about as a beginner is the paper type. So I told you guys that I'm using laser copy paper and I did experiment with regular typical copy paper and sublimation paper. And I really have found that the laser paper is the most, um, is the brightest. This is what my design looked like with the pens and markers on sublimation paper. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but the black outlines basically barely show. So I definitely don't recommend using sublimation paper. And then when you look at this penguin that I just showed you, I don't know how well you guys can see that on camera, but the lines are a little blurry. So they're not the greatest in quality and the laser copy paper really does bring out the um, best in the pens. Another thing that you can do is actually set your pens with the cap side down about 24 hours before you're going to use them. So you guys saw in the last clip that I had my pens stored in this mug so that the pen so, so that the cap side was down and that way I could let the ink start dripping to the edge of the pens. So that's another tip for getting really, really great um, quality lines with all of your pens. And lastly, I thought I would show you guys the um, laser paper that I used. I bought this at Target. It's the 24 pound um, paper and you'll see that it says 97 bright. So when I looked at the differences between regular copy paper and laser paper, I learned that basically the brightness is the main difference. So laser paper is usually in the range of like 95 to 100 brightness, where regular copy paper is only about an 80 or an 85. So it is significantly brighter. And so I'm not positive this is the case, but I suspect that the brighter the paper is, the better the ink looks. And that's why it's preferable to use laser copy paper. So anyway, I just wanted to explain those things to you guys because those were things that I was hung up on when I first started using infusible ink, pens, and markers. So now we're gonna go ahead and prepare our mug. So I've got a 12 ounce Cricut mug. Remember that whenever you use infusible ink, whether it's the pens or the ink transfer sheets, you do have to have a polyester coated blank. So these are Cricut brand mugs um, that I really, really like using. And this is a 12 ounce mug. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually roll a lint roller on it to get off anything that may be left behind like dirt or dust, because that can actually affect your transfer. So you just can lightly lint roll it all the way around and set that aside. And next it's time to add our template onto our mug and then tape it down with heat tape. I'm using Cricut brand heat tape, but you can use any brand that you like, but it does need to be a specific type of tape, um, which is heat resistant, not just regular like scotch tape. And so now I'm going to put my design with the, um, marker side facing in touching the cup. That's why we mirrored it. So I don't know how well you guys can see that with the light passing through it. My mug press is heated. But when you when the light passes through it, it does look correct and it says, hello, beautiful. So that's why we needed to mirror it. So now I'm gonna take a second and just make sure that it's well placed around my mug. And since this is just regular paper, it doesn't have a transfer sheet to hold it in place or anything. So I'm gonna try not to touch the mug with my bare hands and I'm just gonna place it around the best that I can. But the template does size the paper pretty well. I think that looks pretty good. 
You also wanna make sure that your design is the correct side up with the um, actual mug facing up. I saw a few people say that they accidentally pressed their mug upside down and that would be sad, right? So make sure that it's facing the correct direction. And then when you're happy with the way that it looks, I have some uh, pieces of tape that I cut off camera. You'll wanna go ahead and tape this in place. So first I'm gonna tape these tabs underneath the handle. But ideally, when you place the tape, you want to place it either around this area or around the bottom, but you want to try not to put tape over areas where the ink has been written on the paper so that the press stays super even. So keep that in mind if you have a design that goes around the bottom of your um, transfer sheet. So I'm just going to put a couple pieces of tape. I don't like to, I don't feel the need to like tape it like crazy or anything. But here's the next key that you absolutely have to do when it comes to using the pens and markers. So because the pens and markers can bleed through this piece of laser copy paper, you need three pieces of butcher paper to go around the outside of your mug as well. And that's just to protect the inside of your mug press from getting anything on it. And another question I had as a beginner is, is butcher paper different than parchment paper or wax paper? And it is, it's based on the coating on the around, around the outside of the butcher paper. So I bought a huge roll of butcher paper from Amazon and that's what I used. I just trimmed these sheets down to size. So I recommend specifically using butcher paper and I cut my sheets to 3.75 inches high by nine inches wide. So I cut all three of those using my paper trimmer and that makes it easier because I can just kind of take all three pieces of paper stacked on top of each other and wrap it around my mug and tape it all at once. And you want this ideally to cover your entire design. So yeah, that looks pretty good to me. They especially need to be aligned at the bottom. And again, that's just so that you can get a good even press with your mug press. So it's okay if they stick around the top a little bit, but try to even them up really well with the bottom. So I'm gonna tape both of these in the same area as my regular transfer sheet. I may end up having to use two pieces of tape there. And you also want it to be nice and tight. So make sure that if you have any loose areas, you pull those taut before you tape it. And then I'm just gonna pick a couple of different areas that I've already placed the tape and place some across the bottom. And I used to tape around the top and then I realized that it didn't really matter since that's not where my design's at. And those pieces of um, paper that are sticking over at the top are not a big deal. So I don't tape at the top anymore. I just tape underneath the handle and along the bottom. So then when your mug press is preheated, which means the light is green, you can go ahead and insert your mug into the chamber. and lower down the lever. And you'll notice that the difference with the Cricut mug press is that there are no temperature or time settings. The mug press automatically detects how much time and the temperature that it needs. So you'll see it progress with these lights as they light up. And then when the last one lights up, you'll hear the mug press beep and that's how you'll know it's done. So on average, it takes about five or six minutes. So I'll get a little movie magic going here and I'll show you what the mug looks like when it's finished. So once all of the lights are blinking, you can raise up the lever and then you can very carefully grab your mug out of the mug press. Make sure that the handle is not hot. So far, I think the mug press has done a great job of not heating up that handle. And then you'll wanna place it on a heat resistant surface, ideally like an easy press pad or something like a trivet. And you'll wanna let it cool completely before you peel the paper off and reveal your design. So I'm gonna let it cool about 15 minutes or so, and then we'll come back and check out our design. So once your mug is totally cool to the touch, you can remove the tape and the paper. Thank you. 
and check out how bright and beautiful that turned out. Now keep in mind that I am just using the infusible ink pens on a um, compatible Cricut blank mug, but you can write on laser copy paper and transfer it to anything that's um, sublimation or infusible ink compatible. So any of the Cricut blanks, you can um, transfer these onto t-shirts, tote bags, coasters, and all kinds of beautiful options. And I can't wait to see what you guys are going to create with your infusible ink pens and markers. If you're not already a part of one of my crafty fams on Facebook, I would love to have you join one of my Facebook groups. So I'll link both down in the description below. And if you make anything using my tutorials, whether it's an infusible ink mug or something else, and you share it out on Instagram, be sure to use the hashtag DIYAlex because I love seeing what you guys are crafting. And if you've made it this far in the video, then I really want to get to know you on social media. So please be sure to find me at DIY Alex Vanover on pretty much all major social media platforms. I'll also put direct links to my profiles down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it, then be sure to subscribe to the DIY Alex YouTube channel and be sure to ring the bell so that you get notified every single time that I put out a new video every single week. But don't wait for next week's video. Be sure to check out this one next. Or if you want to make your DIY dreams come true, be sure to check out this video. I know that you're going to love it.